What's up guys, Randy with Ace Tactical. Today we're gonna to be doing a product review on the lead and steel Pandora. It is this optic right here. This firearm is cleared by the way. Um, lead and steel Pandora, what it is, it's a closed emitter optic, uh, very similar to the Aimpoint Acro, very popular optic out there. It shares the same footprint as the Acro P2. Um, one of the big selling points with this is that the window size is actually, lead and steel claims 30% larger. Um, I haven't, I'm not gonna go out and do measurements to actually see if it's 30% larger. I do have an Acro P1, I don't have a P2, um, but I do have a P1. I put them up side by side. The, the Pandora window is definitely larger. So the window size is definitely larger than the Acro P2. Um, some, and then we went ahead and conducted torture testing to test the reliability and the integrity of the optic itself. As you can see on here, and you guys will see other footage, um, the optic is pretty scuffed up now. Um, all the shooting footage, by the way, was filmed at Safe Fire Indoor Shooting Range in Camas, Washington. Um, big shout out to them. Great shooting range, great indoor shooting range if you guys live in the Pacific Northwest. We got the lead and steel Pandora we're going to be doing a review on. Right now we're going to get into some torture testing on this optic. Um, we'll do some drop testing. We'll do a few other things, racking it off the slide. Um, but as you can see, there already is some scuff marks on it. I've been, I've had it for some time. I've been shooting it. The scuff marks are just for me throwing it around in my range bag, in the car, stuff like that. I'm not gentle with the gun. Um, none of my guns are safe queens. I use them all pretty aggressively. So you can see there's wear and tear on the gun itself, wear and tear on the optic. All right, guys, as you can see, I was using the top to hammer in that nail. Um, I don't know if you can see very well, but I did hit on the um, elevation adjustment knob. So I would be pretty surprised if it didn't lose zero. Um, because of that, I hit the elevation adjustment knob, but we'll see if it holds zero um, or not. Guys, now we're going to use the side of the optic to hammer in this next nail. Um, this firearm is cleared, by the way. be dropping it from the hip onto concrete. Um, I stand at 5'8", and then we're dropping it from my hip. It's gonna pain me. Oh. Still up. We'll do another one. Still good. All right, third time, last time. Still good. Uh, we'll see if it holds zero. Guys, this is some of the aftermath of the torture testing. Uh, you can see right here out of the battery cap, there is a chunk of metal taken out. You can see on the front of the housing, it is deformed on the corner right here. This corner got bent in. Um, other than that, everything appears to be intact. The dot is still presenting. Uh, it's not shattered or anything like that. So. That's a good sign. We'll see if it holds zero or not once we head out to the range and shoot at 25 yards. We'll check our grouping. Before the torture testing, went ahead and got this zero at 25 yards, 75 feet. Um, just standing, not rested on a bench or anything. Went ahead and got it zero at 25 yards. That's typically what I zero all my handgun optics at.
And then we did the torture testing and then shot again at 25 yards to confirm zero. Um, I'll give you a spoiler. It did end up holding zero. My grouping was a little, you guys will see the target. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and chalk up any of the flyers to my shooting ability and not the optic itself. Could be me. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Let's put up another one. See if the next one's any better. It's probably me. Because for the most part, the grouping's fine. These are probably flyers for me. So I would say it held zero. Hey guys, let's go ahead and talk about some of the features on the Pandora that I really like. Um, obviously that big window, it is, I train a lot with Acro P1. Um, I do like this better because of the window. It makes it very easy to pick up that dot. It is a 3MOA dot, which is, I really like 3MOA. Um, if you guys know me, you know I like anywhere between 2 and 4MOA. So 3MOA, great dot. Uh, it runs on a 30, I think it was 30,000 hours is what lead and steel claims to get out of the battery. Um, I haven't had it for that long. I think I've had it for a couple months now. Haven't changed out the battery. So obviously I haven't had it for 30,000 hours, but Battery's still running strong. I keep it on probably the mid brightness setting. Um, battery's running very strong. The housing, very durable. One thing I will mention, um, so the weight, it's 2.3 ounces. The Acro P2 is 2.1 ounces, so a little lighter. Um, not a big difference to me. Just keep in mind a heavier optic every time that this slide action comes back. Uh, it's going to be more weight on the end of the slide, inducing a little more muzzle flip. but. Two tenths of an ounce, uh, pretty insignificant. I didn't feel any big change with the recoil impulse. Uh, but 2.3 ounces, pretty good weight size. If you guys do somehow end up being able to break this and you're the original owner, lead and steel will replace it for you. Um, full lifetime warranty. That's pretty, pretty hard to argue you guys, with. Let's talk about the price. On their website, lead and steel listed the Pandora for $3.99 which is a pretty good price if you compare it to like Acro P2 at $5.99 or the Steiner MPS, I think is around $5.50. Um, so a little bit, a good amount cheaper than its competitors, which is very nice if you're on a tight budget. Um, but even if not, you guys will see this optic at the price point, very durable, um, very good integrity, holds up very well. The Pandora does offer three night vision settings, which is very nice. Um, but also in the daylight, on its brightest setting, it is very freaking bright. I would say daylight bright, um, very bright on its brightest setting. One thing I was a huge fan of, um, cause I'm very particular when it comes to this on any optic, but your elevation and windage adjustments, they are very positive. It's a very positive click and you can hear it each time you make an adjustment. Um, that's something I'm very particular about. I hate when the elevation and windage adjustments are mushy or it's kind of hard to tell when you have an actual adjustment. So great on lead and steel for doing that. As that concludes my review of the lead and steel Pandora, I would not hesitate at all to pick up another one of these and run in on a duty gun setup. I think it's structural integrity is something I would trust very much. I think it's very durable optic. Um, full disclosure, however, I will say lead and steel did hook me up with kind of a content creator discount when sending me this. I don't think they hand picked it out or anything. I think all the other ones are gonna be very durable just like this one and again they do offer that lifetime warranty if you are the original purchaser so just keep that in mind all right guys thanks for checking out the video don't forget to like and subscribe uh, check out my instagram randy underscore lay r-a-n-d-y underscore l-e-y-y -Y. check out lead and steel check out their instagram um cogworks shout out to them i'm going to be doing a lot of work with them in the future so shout out to cogworks check out their instagram as well